the mic up. Does anybody hear me? Let's see, let's pop out the chat. Get this going here. Hello, anybody out there? We are live here on the Print 3D channel. I don't know if anybody's there yet. Audio's working. Joseph, R2A3867, welcome, welcome. Let me get the uh, chat window opened up here. Give me a second here, guys. Welcome, I'm glad you guys could join me. Got some really cool stuff in that box you're seeing in front of you, so that should be fun. Let's get this chat window going. All right, there's the chat window. Charles, welcome. Welcome, everybody. I'm glad you guys could join me for this kind of surprise unboxing here of this uh, 3D printer. Um, I'm going to wait a couple minutes here. I'll probably tweet something out while everybody comes into the room. Uh, you can see the box here. I've got a couple of cameras set up. I hope everything's in focus. I know the main camera may shift or focus around a little bit, and I'm sorry about that. Um, it's just that it's a wide shot here, and there's a lot to focus on. I suppose I could turn some of these lights off, but then it would get really dark. Heather's here. Hello, my wife. Pierre, welcome. Baruch Torres, welcome. JDCAMC, welcome. Welcome, you guys. Thank you guys for joining me for this kind of surprise unboxing of a uh, 3D printer. Something in this box. You guys will see it here in a couple minutes. Let me uh, do a little social media tweet here and let everybody know we're rocking this out. So. Should be more people joining us too. We've got, looks like we've got quite a few people watching. There's 15 people in the room. Thank you guys for joining me. Sorry about the typing sound. Let's see, how do I tweet this out? I've never actually done this. Oh, there it is. Awesome. Hold on a second, everybody, while I put this out on social media. Hmm? Practical printing. What's up, Chris? Thanks for joining me. Appreciate you coming along. Coming along for the ride here. Oop. Okay, so we're still streaming everybody, right? Uh, it looks like Chrome is having some issues with Twitter. So, hang on. <laughs> Oh no. Okay, so we might be having some technical difficulties here because I tried to tweet out while I was live streaming and I think that was a little bit too much, <laughs> a little bit too much for Chrome to handle. I haven't restarted it in a couple of days. It's spinning now. I hope I'm still broadcasting live, but I may have to force quit Chrome and we may go offline for a second, but we'll come right back. So I'm sorry about that, guys. I just have to fix this real quick. Yikes. All right. I may drop out here.
Probably should have used my phone. I don't know if I'm still live. Okay. Are we still live? All right, there we are. Are we back? Are we back live? I restarted Chrome. I think it's working. I'm not going to tweet. Okay, good. Sounds like it never, uh, it, the stream kept going. So that's good. All right, so I'm going to bring up the chat window here again so I can see. Give me one second. Okay. Just checking on the chat. Sound and video are super offset. Okay, let's uh, double checking. Are we still live? Everything good? Taking a sip of water, sorry headphone users. All right, folks, so I have a 3D printer here in this box and I'm anxious to show you guys what it is. I'm going to stand up and I'm going to take it out of the box so you guys can get your first look at what we're unboxing here. So, and I'm gonna preface this right off the bat that this printer was sent to the, ch whoa. That's a fresh box. This printer was sent to the channel for free for review. We weren't compensated in any way for our unboxing, our review, or use of the printer. It's basically given to us as a gift and we did not pay for it and they are not paying us for the review either. Um, I decided to do this unboxing now because uh, they are going to have a presence. Uh, the company is called Panospace and that'll get everybody on the keyboard typing. We are still live, right? Okay, the company is called Panospace and they are going to have a presence at CES 2018 and they wanted me to have this printer and I asked them if I could unbox it live and they said sure. Once we're, undone, once we're done with the unboxing and the initial setup of the printer, I'll put links down in the description for, on the repost where you can go and purchase the printer. Now from what, what I understand, you can purchase the printer online for $799 US and it is available overseas. This printer is available internationally. This printer actually came from California, from their California reseller. They don't have a big resell system set up yet. They don't have a big box or, or, a, or a virtual box, I guess we could call it, system set up with like Gearbest or one of the big manufacturers, to my knowledge, to this day. So what you're seeing is basically kind of like a first look, unless you were at CES last year, 2017, where they did have a booth set up, and we did get a chance to take a printer home. It was a test model and it was working on the floor. We had some issues with it and I worked with uh, Panospace and I sent them some emails and then there was some contact lost and then we regained contact again and they sent us the newest model and that one's gone. So this is the latest and greatest, uh, much improved from what I understand, uh, Panospace 3D printer. So let's see if I can get this out of the box and not destroy it. All right, that's a huge box, so let me get this out of the way. Sorry, headphone users. This is the Panaspace 3D printer, and it is a all-in-one environment. They do provide filament. Uh, they do have their own um, software that's included. It's called uh, Pano Builder, I believe it's called, and I've installed it on the Mac. I haven't had a chance to really play with it. There's an uh, onboard interface. There's an LCD. I don't know if you guys can see. I'm going to rotate the box a little bit. So you guys can see what's going on here. 
It's got a pretty small build space, so I think some of the images that you're seeing on there are promotional images that they may have done in pieces. But nonetheless, you can get a good idea there of what the printer is. So I will turn this. I think one side has some specs on it. And I'll read you guys. I'm going to duck out of the way here while you guys look at the box. And I'll read you guys off the specs here on the side. It uh, works with Mac, Mac and PC. It's a, let's see, one-click printing, maintenance-free, includes a roll of filament, a scraper, a glue stick, and an adjustment wrench. The print technology is obviously FDM. Uh, the build volume is 6 inches by 6 inches by 6 inches with a layer resolution of 0.25 millimeter layer height. The filament type is PLA, obviously, and it's a 1.75. The extruder has a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, and the actual size of the device, weight-wise, is only 16.5 pounds. So everything in the box weighs 21 pounds. And this is their retail box. So if you were to go and purchase this in the store, this is most, most likely this is what you're going to see. And I actually do see a barcode on here. And there's a serial number on the box. The packaging is really, really nice. I like the handle on the top. But more importantly, what's inside the box? So let's turn this back around. I'm going to check the... Yeah, the lag is real. Sorry, guys. Sorry about the lag. Uh, I probably should have boosted up the signal and I don't really want to mess with this too much and cause another problem. I can boost up, I believe, if I go into my settings here and do the stream output and we can crank up this bit rate to 7500. Let's see if that helps. So let me take a second to buffer in and, and get going here. We've got 23 people in the room watching. This is cool. Thank you guys for coming for the unboxing of the Panospace 3D printer. So let me stand up here again so I can open up the box for you guys and you guys can see what's inside. So, like I said, this is some really nice packaging. There's a built-in handle on the top. And once again, once we're done with the stream, I'll put all the information uh, about the printer, where you can purchase it, and everything else that you need to know for it. So the first thing I'm seeing, and let me see, well, you know what? I'll take this and we'll show you as we go what's in. So the first thing you get to see when you open up the box is the accessory box. And inside the accessory box, we have a roll of white PLA 1.75. It's a small roll. It uses a cassette system on the side, so it's probably going to be completely proprietary. I don't know if they're planning to do open source, but it is kind of a closed environment. Now, this is a type of 3D printer that would be competing with the other larger companies trying to get a foothold into that shelf space that those guys own right now. So to start with, in the box, in the accessory box, we have a roll of PLA 1.75 white. And it's nicely packaged. It's vacuum sealed. There is a silica bag inside. Next thing I'm seeing is our little part remover, our little scraper. There is a Bowden tube with a little nozzle thing on the end. We have a glue stick, power cable, USB cord. We have our power brick, FSP group. It's like a basic power supply. Pretty nice. And some sort of adjustment wrench or tool of some sort. There's some teeth on one end and obviously a hole on the other. We'll figure out what that is for later on. And we have a user manual. You guys can actually see that over here, I guess, right? There's the user manual. And there is a quick start guide. And there is a product registration with a one year limited warranty. So that's pretty cool, one year limited warranty. So let's put this box over here temporarily. And I can see the printer inside. So the quick start guide, let's take a quick look at this and see if there's anything I need to know before I pull the printer out of the box. And there is some instructions on unpacking the printer. So I'm going to read this to you. Thank you for purchasing our Panospace 3D printer. We pride ourselves in having the most innovative products on the market with cutting edge technology that is easy to use. We are dedicated to making the most enriching learning experiences for you and hope you have as much fun using it as we did creating it. That's pretty cool. Just says carefully take the printer out of the box and place it on a sturdy table. 
and then carefully remove all fastening tape. Be extra careful when removing tape from print bed and the filament holder cover. Okay. And then after that, there's loading filament, printing from the printer's touchscreen, downloading and installing, installing software, and printing from the panel builder, which is a tethered model. So there's, there is a, uh, I think it's a micro SD card on the back, so you can move between your computer, or you can just use the touchscreen that's built in. It's got a nice full color touchscreen on there, and we'll get to that in a second. I do have some uh, marketing materials that Panospace did send me, and I'll be showing those once we get set up and I have to move some cameras around. Um, there's just basic information here on the Quick Start Guide. There's double checking everything that came with it, and we are included everything that was it, included in the box. Everything is on there, so you can see the accessory guide there. And then the user's manual, which is actually nice to have because normally you would have to go on the internet and download this, so they spend a little bit of money. It's actually pretty nicely printed. It's all in English. It's pretty interesting. There's even a troubleshooting section in the back, so that's good. So I'm going to set that aside and let's get the printer out. So let's move some of this stuff out of the way. And again, thank you guys for joining me for uh, unboxing the Panospace 3D printer. Like I said in the beginning, once the stream is done and it's reposted, I'll put a links down into the description where you guys can go and purchase this. This is, av this is available internationally and in the US. And the Print 3D channel will be making no money off that link. It's just a, going to be a link to the purchase of the printer. So we didn't work out any kind of affiliate program or anything like that. I just wanted to unbox their printer. So let's go ahead and unbox this. All right, sound sync fine to me. They're refreshing your browser. We have 20 people still watching. Chris is taking off. Thanks, Chris, for joining us for the time you can, if you can jump back in any time. Let's go ahead and get this out of the box. All right, let me slide this out. Sorry, headphone users. Let me close this box up. Really easy to get out of the box. The packaging is really nice. We've got some nice foam here. I've got enough cord, so bear with me, guys. I may go off camera. All right. And sorry about the squeaky floor. I've been trying to avoid that floor for 280 days. So anyway, here's the printer. Let's take these foam pieces off. Get those out of the way. Get that out of the way. Oh, now I can sit back down. You guys can still see me. Everything's going good. Oh, sorry, Charles. Well, I thank you for joining me either way. You never know, it could be open source in the future. Or maybe it is, and I don't know everything about this printer yet. Maybe stick around for a while and see what happens. All right, so, sorry about that headphone users. Looks like I can access the printer. There we go. Let's flip it around so you guys can see the front. And I'll start taking the tape off. Whoop. Stuck to my cord. Let go. All right. Can everybody still see? Can you guys see it? And once we get it plugged in and stuff, we'll, uh, I'm actually thinking about moving it over to a more sturdier table because this is a folding table. And then we'll move a couple of cameras around and you guys be able to see me set up the first print because I'm sure there's something on the SD card that we can print. We can look at the quick start guide, which is user's manual. First thing first is to remove all this tape. And there's a lot of it. I can see a linear rail system down inside there on the top. There's a piece of foam covering up the extruder. Lots of stickers saying, you know, do not touch here, hot. Lots of warning labels. Let me 
23 people watching. Appreciate you guys coming in to watch the unboxing of the Panospace 3D printer. This is something new. They're trying to make a little fight on the, that shelf space with the uh, desktop 3D printer. You can go to Instagram. They have a very active Instagram account and that has all the information. I think they have some sample prints there too. If you're looking for what the prints might look like from the printer before we get started. I don't believe they have an active Twitter account. And there's a little piece of foam here over the extruder area. Okay, so we have some tape holding the bed down and I'll be careful not to touch the bed too much. Finger grease, stay to the edges. All right. It is a nice design. I do like the way it looks. At CES 2017, and I have an interview with uh, one of their representatives that I was going to post when I actually saw him in the booth. And he talked about what they wanted to do. And the idea was to make this printer accessible to everybody, have automatic bed leveling and bed compensation of some sort, um, be easy to use with the touch screen, color, full touch screen. I guess the pitch was when I was talking to him is they wanted a printer that had everything that everybody else didn't have. So we'll see when we open it all up. I can get it printing. Okay. So there's some tape on these little cassette sides here. Let me see if you guys can see. On this side, there's a little where the filament cassettes go. That's cool. Out of the way of little fingers. Probably helps that it looks like it's a Bowden system. We do have a Bowden tube here. So we've opened up that side. I just want to make sure we get all the tape off. It's just a little finger press plastic spring loaded system. It's a injection molded plastic. This comes off. Yes. Okay. And let's see. It's not that heavy. So I guys can show you guys the guts and you can see that it's got linear rails in there. So, Mm, the bed moved nicely. Oh yeah, very smooth, very smooth movement. Very, very smooth. It's belt driven and there are linear rails. So that's pretty cool. I think there's tape on the other side. Let me remove that tape. So we have a visitor in the room. Our cat Stella, the 3D printing cat, is roaming around on the floor. So she may, uh, she, <laughs> She may rub her face on the cameras, tripods or something during the broadcast. So it's not an earthquake. It's just Stella the cat because there's boxes in the room. And we all know if you own a cat, how much they love boxes. Okay, so looks like I got all the tape off. On the back, we have our power supply, USB, power switch, and a micro SD card reader on the back. And you can see that there. Let's get that in the view there. Oop, tilt it that way. There you go. You can see that. All right, so I've got all the tape off. I don't see any place there would be any more tape. We open both sides. Yep, everything looks good there. Looks good there. Let's check out the user's manual and the quick start guide on setting it up because obviously we have to attach our Bowden system because so we do have a Bowden tube here. Let me stand up and make sure I don't unplug sound. See what we got going on in here. Ah, filament insertion point. There is a uh, red sticker with an arrow and there's a hole in the metal and it looks like a lot of metal parts. I do see what looks to be a part cooling fan. And looks like, yeah, linear rails going on the z-axis, x and y. Looks like it might be an entirely linear rail system, belt driven on the extruder carriage. So that's awesome. That's pretty smooth. That should give us some pretty clean prints. All right, cool beans. I'm checking the chat. 
Yes, it looks like it'll hold RC life on. Thanks for joining me, buddy. I appreciate you coming by the stream. Cool little printer. This is the Panospace 3D. Let me turn this around. Sorry, headphone users for the thundering. It's a nice little desktop printer. It's got a six inch cubed build, build volume, 0.4 millimeter nozzle, 1.75 filament. There's cartridges on either side, proprietary filament here. They do have a lot of colors and I do have some information. Again, so they did send me some marketing material. So I do have some information on the printer. So I will be able to share all that once the stream is done when we repost. So, all right, let's get everything we need. We got a power brick, power cable. We'll keep our glue stick handy just in case we need it. We have 21 people watching. It's a single nozzle, it's a single nozzle system. So I think you're just uh, getting either a extra storage or they are uh, future teching this. So they'll be able to someday maybe use a dual extruder. The carriage system is pretty small in here. There is a fan on the hot end and there's also a part cooling fan. So it does have adequate cooling going down. Looks like there's a lot of LED lighting in here. So let's get it started here. No heated bed, but you know, I don't really think if they were making a desktop friendly printer with an open compartment like this, that it would ever want to print ABS anyway. So yeah, six inch by six inch by six inch build area, layer resolutions, 0.25 millimeter. It doesn't, it doesn't go any lower than 0.25. That's pretty basic resolution too but it might be able to tweak the settings within the panel builder software and increase that resolution height. But we'll see when we get in the LCD screen. Uh, maximum moving speed says X and Y axis 150 millimeters per second. And it's a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. It says extruder quantity one. So as if they're specifying that it, it could actually be upgraded to a secondary nozzle should it need to. Okay, so loading up the filament, it says open up the left filament cover, top lid, insert filament through the right top, right hole at the top of the filament holder, place the filament roll into the, into the holder and close the filament holder cover, insert filament through Teflon tube and then insert filament into the hole on the top of the extruder and close the lid. So, Dealy do. This little end cap here actually looks 3D printed. Let me see if you guys can see that. It actually looks 3D printed, that little cap on the end there. There's a little bit of elephant footing and I see some a seam and layer lines. So afterthought possibly. Anyway. Let's open up the filament and get that feeding in. I think I have some scissors here handy. Let me hold on a second. Okay. Printer is a Panospace 3D printer. Sorry, headphone users for the noise. Okay. Filament's actually nicely packed. There's tape holding down the filament on either side. Cause that's a pretty nice. There's numbers on there too, as far as like how much is left. And it goes in 
it looks like weight, ounces, grams, yeah, ounces and grams. That's kind of nice. Branded with the Panospace logo. They were at the uh, TCT show. Well, that's cool. Yes, it seems to be like a 250 gram spool. And tape on here is pretty good, but it's not going all the way through. That's kind of weird. You know, really. It's interesting. The tape is kind of weaved into the filament. That's not good. Make sure I get all the little pieces out. We don't want that feeding into the extruder. Okay, that's that one side. Same on this side too. Looks like it got a little wonky in shipment. Hawk 3D Proto, thanks for joining us. Nicholas, Dymo, Miggy Man Mike. 3D Kid. One subscriber away from 200. Everybody go over and check out the 3D Kids channel and push him way over 200. I'm, I'm going to stop for a minute. Everybody go do that. No, I got to hurry up. Joe's live streaming at noon and he's building a printer and I'm sure everybody wants to go see that over this. Okay, so I'm going to clip off a little bit of end because this is kind of mashed up a little bit and we'll clip it on an angle. Filament cut really nice. That was actually a pretty smooth cut. You know what? Let's do the bend test and see what their filament. This is their brand of filament while we got it in my hand. Let's make sure we don't unravel it too much. You guys can see this live. That's pretty good. Let's recut it so we have an angle. Okay. Open the left filament because if I was facing it, that would be this side. Yes. Because the LCD screen is on that side. Okay. There's a little sticker in here that says filament insertion point. <laughs> All right. Let's get the stickers out of the way. We don't want those coming back to haunt us later. Oh, curiosity. Uh, the print temperature says 210 to 230 degrees PLA, 1.75 millimeter white, this side facing out. You guys can see that sticker. Oops, the other way. Yes, the GMAX printer is over here. It's behind the chat window. You guys can't see it. I didn't want to. We're... Yeah, you got it. All right, so we're doing this side facing out. I'm gonna go ahead and try not to unravel the filament too much. Insert filament through right hole atop a filament holder. Oh, there it is. So it's just, this is just more of a guide to bring it out. And then place this inside. Make sure it goes all the way in. There we go. Insert filament through Teflon tube. It looks like it has it coming through this end here, the, the 3D printed part. Okay, there we go. Let's wind that back a little bit. Insert filament into the top of the hole and then close top lid cover. So it doesn't look like this joins up with the extruder, more that it just, this is just a guide tube. Let's move the extruder over. There's a small hole there. So let's go ahead and feed that down into the tube. Yeah, I feel it grabbing a little bit. Some sort of gear in there. Okay, then it says close the top lid cover. So I'm guessing. I 
it goes like that. Oh, there's magnets. Everybody loves magnets. Okay. Everything's still good, audio and video? 24 people still watching? So I'm gonna go ahead and put the cover back on for the filament. See how that fits on there. That's nice and snug. All right, so let's go ahead and get the power supply out of the bag. <laughs> Derek Matthews, hey, I can watch both streams, so I'm not leaving, pal. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate you sticking around. I know Joe's putting together a printer at one o'clock. We're at 12.36 here. There should be models on the SD card to print, so I'm hoping to have this, you know, besides doing a live stream, the idea was, is to show that it's plug and play, I'm, I'm guessing here, that this printer is ready to rock and roll. And having an SD card on the back and you can run it tethered, there's a lot of options as far as getting your, your G-code files to the printer. It looks like Panel Builder is a proprietary um, piece of uh, slicing software and interface and actually you guys want to watch something while I set this up Let's see let's See how that works There's a little bit of PR software about the uh, panel space, panel builder, give you a little insight of what's going on on the desktop model. And then all the slicing and stuff that that does automatically. Looks like a pretty sweet little interface. I believe it's a prop proprietary code that goes to the printer, but it does have the ability to import STL, OBJ, and other file types. When I downloaded the software and I did file from local hard drive under file type, it gave me five or six options. The manufacturer list price for this in the US, from what I'm told, is $799. All right, so that was pretty cool. Gave you a little explanation of what was going on with the panel builder software. I went ahead and put it, plugged in the power supply. I'm gonna move the smaller camera. We're gonna print here because I think I can maneuver around the desk here and give you guys full view with the other camera. Let me grab that. Give you guys a little bit better view here. Of course, I do need to see too. Guys can see everything in the smaller. Yeah, that's a pretty good shot. Okay, let's fire it up and see what we got. Looks 
Looks like it's doing a self check. We're right to it. Sweet. That was easy. Okay. Let's go ahead and load up the, the rest of the filament steps. It says click the adjust button on the menu. Very responsive. Load filament. Ooh, check it out. Lights. Okay, next step says to uh, feed the filament in. Let's go ahead and just because I want to get a clear shot at this. Let's move the cover over so I can see down into the hole. Okay. The cooling fan on the extruder just fired up. It looks like it's a slightly like an E3D hot end clone. Appears to be some sort of sensor in there too. There is a board and I'll get you guys a closer look here. Hold on a second. You can see what I see. The extruder fans heating up. And there is a temperature gauge on the front. It's heating up pretty quick. It's feeding. I can feel the tug in the filament. Yep, there we go, it's extruding. Okay, let's go ahead and close this back up again. How did I have this? Whoopsies. <laughs> what a dork. Anyway, let's leave that. I think I have some tweezers over here. Let me grab some tweezers and get that little piece of filament out of there. Okay, heater, the extruder heats up the filament and extrudes the filament on the print head. If the filament doesn't come out, click the extrude button. Click the finish button after filament has extruded from printhead. So it has. So let's grab the little piece out of there. You guys still see everything? Whoops, sorry. No, it's not a heated bed, it's glass. It has some sort of surface on it, like a build tacky style roughed up. I think it might be sandblasted possibly, which I hear is an option nowadays. Okay, so we extruded, so hit finish. Bed drops down. Extruder moves over. Looks like it goes into a pause mode. The fan's still on. You guys still see everything? Can you guys see that little LCD screen? Okay, step 1.8, print 3D models. Click the print button on the main menu of the touchscreen. You should see a list of pre-installed files. Choose any file you want to print. Confirm the information on the screen. Check the filament roll to make sure you have enough for the print. Always a good idea. Apply two thin layers of glue on the print bed with the supplied glue stick before continuing. Then click the continue button. Your model will start to print at this stage. Okay, so let's go ahead and we have our glue stick. 1245, we still have time here. We're doing pretty good. Looks like I was a bit of a bonehead here. and But we get to see the linear rails in action. Just have to keep an eye on this thing. I could unload the filament and reload it and do this properly. Let's see if we have that option. Yes unload filament.
There's also an adjust gap and adjust level button on that little LCD screen there. So please wait, please wait while we're heating it up. So basically I, when I was fiddling with it, I didn't put the thing on right. So anyway, learn how to use the touch screen. On the touch screen you can install, uninstall filament and print a few pre-installed models. Preheat, load and unload. There is an adjustment section. It says 2.5 adjust level. Note, with our special printing algorithm, this operation is not necessary for most cases unless the print bed or the extruder has changed. So apparently there's some sort of algorithm that runs during the print stage or during the slicing that adds some sort of code. Interesting. From the slot on the back of the print bed, loosen the fastening screw under point C. Oh. Well, so if you do mess with the bed, it is a bit of a task. Oh yeah, there's a slot in the back here so you can access everything. It's riding on linear rails. Okay, so let's unload this filament. This says remove the filament. Okay. Oh yeah, look, there's a little blob here. You guys can see that. At the end, it came freely out. It backed it out a little bit and that was what was removed. So I'm just going to clip off this end and reinstall the cover and everything properly here. Because I was messing with it. This is what I wanted to do. Okay, so let's load the filament. I like how everything moves out of the way when you're done doing stuff and the light goes off. So let's go ahead and load the filament. The touch screen is super active. I just barely touched that load button and it went ahead and did its thing. There is a little bit of schwitz there on the extruder nozzle. Okay, so we'll reload the filament. Next. It'll heat up here for a couple of seconds. 26 people watching. Thank you guys for joining me, for joining me of the Panospace 3D printer unboxing. Like I said in the beginning, this is a 6x6x6 six 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 build area with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. It takes 1.75 filament. It looks to be proprietary, but I don't see any filament sensors or filament, um, it's loading the filament now, so bear with me for a second. It's taking the filament nicely. This, the drive gear seems very strong. And it extruded. All right. Our filament. The, uh, I don't see any uh, barcoding or sensors or anything. It might just be a proprietary cartridge system, which means that you could have a spool holder on the outside of the machine with a larger spool of filament, especially if you're printing a model that's gonna envelop the full six by six by six build area. So I wouldn't say proprietary filament right off the bat. I'd say I don't see any sensors or any way for it to detect how much filament's left on the spool. So you could, you could definitely have an exterior spool holder especially with the Bowden tube system on here. Let me try and get this cover back on. There we go. Ooh, some filament. And there's a part cooling fan, so that's good. I mentioned that earlier. Just trying to get all this filament off of here. Maybe it's better from this side. I do like having all the lights in there so you can see what's going on. So let's go ahead and put the cover back on now that we've done this right. And I do like the magnet aspect everywhere. That's pretty nice. You know, it's a lot easier to put things back together. So it says finish. Let's go ahead and print a model. Put the quick start guide aside. Okay, so we're back to the main menu here, and you can actually go back here. We're done. We're going to see how it prints. So can you guys see the menu? You can see it somewhat. Print. And it's listing cubes, 
or a cube and bearing five in the one and two slot. And it looks like those are the only two models on here. Let's hit refresh. So those must be the only two. So let's try cube. And it's a 20 by 20 by 20 millimeter. Oh, it looks like some sort of calibration cube. That's pretty cool. It says it's going to take 12 minutes, 9 seconds, and 4.3 grams of material. Hit print. It says, please apply the glue stick to the print bed, which it said in the instructions. Looks like regular old, yep, washable glue. It doesn't have any kind of offensive smell. I'm just going to put, this is a 20 by 20 cube, so we don't need to gob up the whole print bed, do we? I don't think we do. I don't normally use glue stick. Actually, I've never actually used glue stick, maybe in an emergency, on any of my prints on the GMAX because of the sanded acrylic bed. So now, does it tell you you have to wait for the glue to dry? Apply two thin layers of glue on the print bed with supplied glue stick before continuing, then click the continue button. All right, we are glue sticked away. Continue. Table's a little crooked, sorry guys. Let's see how good it prints on a crooked table. Please wait while heating up. Temperature's moving fast. It's over 200, 205, 206, 210, 213, 221, 222, 224. Okay, it's leveling out 220, 223, 222. There it goes. Looks like it's spitting out a little bit of filament to prime the nozzle. That's exactly what it's doing. Nice big thick bead of filament. Now I don't know if it's going to print a raft first or... I don't know what it's printing. It's a big healthy layer, that's for sure. I've never printed with 0.2 filament. 0.25 millimeter layer height. That's coming back over here. That's interesting. You guys seeing all that? Looks like it might be putting a raft down. Oh, rocking and rolling now. Top layers. Kind of want to take this top off so you can see down inside, but it's coming out towards the front here. I can see it. Looks like a pretty consistent top layer, or I'm sorry, bottom layer. So that must be some sort of raft. I don't use rafts, so it wasn't uh, consistent lines it was like every other line, so that must be a raft. Cooling fan just jumped on. We're on to layer two of the model. It's very clean inside there. There's nothing sticking down. I don't see any probes or anything. Guys want to see underneath the bed. Let's see if I can go flip the camera over, but whatever.
Yeah, it's probably flaring out the camera. I'm sorry, guys. Looks like it does the infill first, and then it does the perimeters. You know what, I think that was all just raft printing <laughs> for those first few layers. Now it's a much smaller model printing on top of that. Sorry guys, I've never used a raft before, so I don't really know how those function. It's a healthy amount of material down, but now it's printing out just the cube. Sorry, I know that was horribly blurry. It's relatively quiet. I'm sure you guys can hear that. My uh I mean, you could literally have this going in the corner of the room with your TV on and you probably wouldn't hear it. I mean, it's just printing a cube. There's no infill. It's just a hollow cube. So I don't, we'll see how it handles bridging. You know, I, I really want to see inside this. There's no sensors. Oh yeah, there we go. Better view. Let's see if I can offer you guys the same perspective that I have. It is really bright, Chris, I agree. You can really see the part printing in there, though, I have to say. I know it's flaring out because of these Logitech, Logitech webcams. And it is very quiet, considering, even with the top cover off. That's due to those linear rails, I'm guessing. It's very heavy-duty equipment inside here. The, uh, the belts. It's like a one-piece belt. I don't see where it's tightened on. Maybe on the extruder itself, but... I don't know how you would tighten that belt if it did get loose. I do see end stops, mechanical end stops. There's one right there. There's one end stop right there. And you can see there is linear rails going all the way across. And there are linear rails going on the Z too, and on the bed too. It looks like dual linear rails on the bottom. It looks like the bed is attached. It might be glued to a carriage system. There's a little wrench that they give you, a metal, metal stick, and there is some instructions on there. This little dealy here, sorry about the camera, but that can get in there and there's a couple of thumb screws in there and it looks like you just slide it in to remove the bed if it comes off. There's three of them, plus it looks like a M5 screws there's a uh, the stepper motor 
mount it on the bottom of the bed. Let's see if I can bring the camera around the back here, show you some more details of the printer of the guts. So there's a little, there's a little hole there because there's a stepper motor right there. And there is still some tape in there. I do see another mechanical stepper. We do have a couple more pieces of tape roaming around in there too. They don't affect the printing, so they're just in there to hold plastic together. So. It's like the cube's almost done. With me messing around there, I may have made a layer shift there, guys. Yikes. <laughs> going to have to do some serious bridging here in a minute. The display screen is showing, oh, there goes bridging. Wow, it's doing that like a champ. Just covered up that big empty space. That was good. I think I bumped it though, so it layer shifted. And this is a very wobbly table. I know it's going to flare out a little bit, but it is bridging like a champ in there, guys because there was no infill. I don't know if there's like two top layers or three top layers. It was default print that's on the, on the uh, printer. Looks like we're about done here. 94%. I hear the sound of uh, clacking or cooking plastic. I don't see any curling on that raft. It's uh, the, the, the whole body of the machine is plastic. It's ABS plastic. It actually says it in the book. Oh, where print is done. There's our first print off the Panospace 3D printer. I know it's flaring out. There you go. That's a little bit better. You can see the cube yourself. Everybody see that? Oops. Wrong way, Jeff. There you go. You can also see down in the machine there a little bit, there is a, what looks to be some sort of sensors right there. Maybe induction sensors of some sort. There's a couple of them where the bed meets over there. You can see the little yellow dots back there, guys. Some sort of sensor back there. Anyway, the screen says print finished. Please take off the print bed or printed model. Sorry. Let's see how we got. Oh, that came right off. Yeah, there's a piece of glue or some sort of like double-sided plastic glue piece on a aluminum or aluminum metal block with a set screw in it. And that's how the bed's attached. Here's our first print. I've never used a raft before, so let's see how this pops off. Well, that popped off pretty good. And as you can see, there is a layer shift there because I did bump the printer and it is on a wobbly table. But that is a pretty clean print. That's actually really clean. I like that a lot. I don't have my micrometer handy. I'll grab it here in a second and we'll measure it. Actually, I have a ruler. And this should be 20 by 20 by 20. So give me a second here. Let me bring the ruler in. I have to go this way. So can you guys see that? That's 20. I mean, I don't have my micrometer, but I do have a ruler here, so. That's pretty close. Pretty close to 20 square. It's pretty good. For a calibration cube, that's a pretty strong print. Looks really clean. Layer lines are nice and smooth. Oh, all right. The little part cooling fan turned off, extruder fan turned off, so the extruder must be down back to temperature. There is a done button, so we can do that. And it's probably going to reset to home and turn off the light. Okay, so now we're back to regular lighting. Now you guys can see this. All right, there you go. There's the first print off the panel space 3D printer. Very clean. There's like one little nubby here where the, the raft was set up. Here's the raft. As you saw, it just popped right off. It's a very nice raft. I've never used them before, but I've seen them. 
it did an amazing job on the bridging on the very last layer because there's no infill in this print. That's pretty cool. That's an awesome first print off the panel space printer. Let's put the top cover back on. Got some magnets here. Okay, so I'm going to back this camera up here. and We're going to go back to the wide lens. See if I can get that to focus. It's a very clean print. It's nice and square. Okay, so let's do this. Let's go back to the small window. Let's go back to the big window. All right, guys, that's pretty cool. I guess I'll print the gear and uh, I'll load up some of the, the panel builder software on my Macintosh. Like I said, I was I already downloaded it and kind of opened it and looked at it, but I didn't poke around too much. I'll slice a couple models and I'll start printing. It's got a, the other sample model that came on the uh, SD card on the back is a uh, gear. So I'm guessing it's one of those cool print and place gear models. So I'll probably queue that up while we're sitting here talking. Actually, you know what? Let's just go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and do that. I mean, it's a little after one. I'm sure Joe's streaming and getting ready to do his build. This actually turned out really good. I am super impressed. I mean, it did a nice bridging job. The layer lines are pretty, pretty consistent. I mean, that top layer where the bridging was is really nice. I did bump the printer, so I am going to move it over to the other table. That way it's on a sturdy table, the same table the GMAX is on. And we'll move the camera over there and we'll finish up. But I just want to tell you guys the what I'm looking at in front of me is a really clean print, a really awesome print. I don't think I need to do any bed leveling or nozzle adjustment. It prints it down a nice little raft. I like the idea of the raft. I've never used these before. It's a very clean raft too. It puts down a nice thick bead of filament. Once the filament has uh, been extruded, there is a little bit of stringing on here, but that might be nominal. I mean, it's some decent filament too. So all in all, I think this is a pretty cool printer. Let's go ahead and uh, let's move it over to the other table here. So bear with me and I'll move a couple of cameras around and then uh, let's wrap it up for today. I appreciate you guys watching. We have 18 people still in the room watching the unboxing of the Panospace 3D printer. This is a six inch by six inch by six inch, six inch square uh, FDM printer. It prints PLA only because it does not have a heated bed. It has a glass bed with a nice little uh, sandblasted etched surface on it and you use glue stick. It has a 0.4 millimeter nozzle and the box says and the packaging all says that it can do a 0.25 millimeter layer height. And of course it uses 1.75 filament in cartridges that go in the sides of the printer, which you can see here. Let's see if I can get that open. Show you guys the open side here while we're still sitting here. I don't see any filament sensors and I don't see any uh, sensors or any kind of chips on the filament spools themselves. So I don't see why you couldn't use, whoa, don't unravel it all the way there, Jeff. I don't see why you couldn't use your own filament and just use a spool holder on the side. So I don't think this is proprietary filament. It does have filament that came with the printer, but that's in the correct spool size. And I have a lot of small spools and I'm sure there's spools out there. Now they did send me some marketing materials with the printer that I could download. And I did see that they have about eight colors available. All your basic colors are available. So there is a lot of colors to choose from here. It's not just white. So they do have a variety of colors. And does the rep cord spool fit in there? The small ones. I whoop, I do have, sorry about that guys. I do have oops, the RGB pack sitting here. Let's see if the little guys will fit in there. Good suggestion, Chris. So I've got the rep cord RGB pack here. 
Are you, is Rep in the room? I haven't been watching the chat, guys. Sorry. That's the RepCord RGB. Let's see. <laughs> They're pretty close. That might fit in there. You know what? This is, where's my scissors? Where's my scissors? If you're looking for Joe's stream, it's the 3D Maker noob. He's putting together a printer. If you're interested in leaving this because we've seen it print, that's what's going on there. Let's see if this fits. Can you guys see that? Yeah, you guys can see that. Ah. Now, spool diameter is a little bit bigger. Just a little bit. It's off by about five millimeters, maybe 10 at the most. Definitely not the larger ones. But you can use a spool holder. Like I said, there's no sensor on here. And there's no uh, little chip or anything on the spool itself. So you can use your own filament just spool holder. It's a Bowden system, so you can have one sitting right next to it. So it'll work. It's cool. Performance 3DP looks well built, but only PLA is a deal breaker for me. Yeah, you know, I, like I said, I don't print with ABS. I think the toxic fumes and stuff are a little bit too much, but I don't print printer parts or parts for manufacturing where people need the ABS. I know there's some high temperature and high density PLAs out there, but I know people like the PLA or the ABS better. Oh, we still have 13 people still watching. Well, you guys saw it print. You know what? While we're finishing up here, I'm going to go ahead and move the printer over to the table. So bear with me. Didn't really even need the part removal tool. That's pretty cool. The part just came right off. I think that's due to the, having the uh, having that raft print on there too. All right, so now, we can watch this print, the gear, and wrap up. Let's go ahead and cue that up. Print. Print. 54 minutes, 22 seconds. You guys will see the results of this on social media, but for now, Let's put on a little bit more glue stick because it says to do it. I usually don't use it, so we'll just put a little bit more down just in case. Don't want to put too much down because this stuff's messy. All right, that should hold it down. It is going to probably print on a raft. So we'll hit continue. All right. All right, folks. As you can see, the uh, panel space is starting another print. Got the other filament spool cover over here. Not having the covers off, it does not appear to stop the prints. So the initial test cube that we printed, that turned out awesome. I'm really impressed with that considering there's no infill in here. It's really clean. I measured it with the ruler. There is a layer skip on here or a layer shift because I did bump the printer and it is on an uneven table. but. We'll see how that little gear system or whatever that gear file is prints and I'll update you guys on social media. I think that's probably going to wrap it up here while we uh, watch the Pano Space uh, warm up to start printing the new model, the gear. And there goes our front doorbell. So I will look into, oh, there it goes. I can actually move this this let's get that there we go yep it's printing out its brim again or it's a uh, raft there's a little bit of curl up here in the corner where i didn't use any glue stick it's printing a circular raft 
pretty good size. You guys still see? Sorry about the squeaky floor. Oh, it's going to run into that poorly done. Let's see how it does with this. Ah! Let's get our clippers before that becomes a nightmare. I have to put glue stick on the whole board, it looks like. I've never used glue stick before, so it's printing out its raft. It's a really healthy layer. It's doing a really good job of extruding. It's very, very quiet. Okay. All right, guys, I think that's going to wrap it up. I'm going to let that print out and we're going to uh, see what it looks like. I'll update you guys up on social media, on Instagram, what the final print looks like from the Panospace printer. Definitely a, a huge shout out to Panospace 3D for providing this printer free of charge for us to unbox and review here on the Print 3D channel. Thank you guys very much. I really appreciate that. I really appreciate the fact that they gave me a printer that hasn't actually been released or people just didn't know about. So that was kind of cool. So this is kind of your guys' first chance to see this printer if you didn't know it existed. And it is printing. We did get a very successful calibration cube that prints it out perfectly on the first try. It loads up pretty easy. I don't see any problems with this being a very cool desktop printer, desktop 3D printer. As it's uh, starting to wrap up the base layer there on the raft, We'll uh, keep you guys updated on social media on how this looks on Instagram. So, and on Twitter too. I know everybody likes to be on Twitter. Looks like it's putting down the base layer of that raft for the gear that it's going to print. I suspect I should have enough roll of, of uh, enough on the roll of filament there to uh, finish off this piece because it's a fresh roll. Does anybody else have any questions? Any thoughts? Anything you want to ask? Again, once the video is posted, I will put links down in the description where you guys can go and purchase this. It is available overseas and in the US. It's $799, I think, is the base price for this 3D printer. So that's pretty cool. It's a good base price. It's got a six inch by six inch by six inch build area with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. It says it can print at a 0.25 millimeter layer height using 1.75 PLA filament. And it's really quiet. It doesn't smell, I don't smell anything, so it's a, it seems to be a, diff, a good grade of PLA. Normally you smell something. Uh, actually, most of the PLAs that we get smell like maple syrup when they start to extrude for the first time. It's got a glass bed, and it looks like it has some sort of built-in uh, algorithm, as they say, to keep the bed level and printing flat. So we'll look into that more, and I'll give you guys an update. You know what, we'll do a follow-up video. We'll do a full review and follow up video once we print out a whole bunch of stuff and use up the filament. I'll uh, see if Panospace can send me a couple more rolls of filament to use because I'm sure I'll burn through this one 250 gram roll pretty quick. And then we'll print out a whole bunch of samples and we'll do a full review of this printer. And I'll get that done for you guys within the next seven to 10 days because I will let Panospace know that I really like the printer and we want some more filament. So, And I'll also try some filament in my own external uh, filament spool holder I have plenty of filament to use. I'll use some of rep cords. It's good colors. Now we have 15 people still watching. Chris is still in the room. A couple people still here. Looks like we are on to the base layer of the, or the final layer of that raft. The cooling fan just kicked on. It's printing along pretty nicely. Sorry for the flare out. Those LEDs are really, really bright. All right, guys. Yes, Chris, I do have a universal spool holder. I use it for my GMAX printer all the time. If you're unfamiliar with Chris's channel, it's Practical Printing. Click on his name, go to his channel, subscribe. Chris and I worked together on a project for a spool holder for uh, working on the TiVo. Which, by the way, guys, if you're curious about that, just a quick update. I just need to tighten the belt. I think it's doing a pretty good job there on the... Uh, I can move this table out of the way a little bit. I'll come closer to you guys. Closer. All right. Now I'm right up in you. 
It's printing out a pretty decent looking uh, raft there. Again, I don't really use rafts. This will be the uh, print surface. This looks like it's doing its last layer of the raft. And then from there, it'll do the surface of the, or the first layer of the print. But that surface looks pretty clean. And again, it's really, really quiet. I can bear with me, headphone users. That's the, uh, the audio on the Panospace 3D printer. It is really, really quiet. Yep, it's printing the first layer of the gear. Yeah, it's a relatively quiet printer. Very impressive. Sorry, headphone users. All right, guys, that'll wrap it up. Uh, we unboxed the printer. We got a couple of prints going. It's super easy assembly. I'd say that without the live stream, you could get this up and running in 15 to 20 minutes. I mean, you just have to take it out of the box, plug it in, and uh, open up the panel builder software, slice up your model, put it on an SD card, put it in the back, and hit print. Looks pretty simple. So in the full review, we'll take a look at panel builder and see what we can do with it as far as importing what kind of file types, OBJ, STL, whatever they have available, because I did see different file types. And we'll run this printer through its paces and see what happens. I can see it's doing a pretty good job on the first few layers of the uh, gear print. It looks like one of those print and place things. So we'll see how the tolerances, the tolerances are on the Panos Base 3D printer with that 0.4 millimeter nozzle with a 0.25 millimeter base layer height. So this will be interesting. It's printing uh, the external perimeter of the gear now. So we'll keep you guys posted. Uh, thank you guys again for coming to the live stream. Oops, sorry about the chair. It's like 13 people still in the room. Again, I appreciate you guys stopping by here at the Print 3D channel. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Uh, make sure you guys check out the 3DP 365 project where we're doing a print every single day through the entire year. And through the month of October, we are doing all kinds of cool Halloween prints. And the prints I have for you guys today is pretty freaking cool. You guys are gonna be pretty, pretty psyched, pretty, uh, freaked out by it. It's an optical illusion. That's all I'm going to say. All right, guys. Uh, thank you guys again for joining me here for the unboxing of the Panospace 3D printer. I'll keep you guys posted on the prints and we'll see you guys next time in the full review. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and share those videos. And again, once the video is posted, I will put links in the description where you guys can purchase the printer. Thank you guys. Have a good day.